Hello there. It's the 23rd of December. We're almost on the edge, of course, of Christmas Eve and Christmas. And please God, all the good that will come from that and out of that for you and for your people. And that's my wish for you, that all you wish for yourself will be God's gift to you over these coming days. In recent weeks, I've been very pleased that a booklet I was asked to do some work on a few months ago called Let Advent Be Advent for the John Neary of the Messenger Publishers asked me would I write a, a little booklet on reflections uh, for each day of the Advent season. And I've been so humbled and, and grateful for the lovely comments that people have made to me over the last number of weeks, people who have used this as, as a, a companion during the, the season of Advent. And I'd like today just to share one of the thoughts. It's from the 23rd of December, which is today. Uh, it's also, of course, this year, the third Saturday of Advent. But I'd like to read the reflection from the 23rd of December, because as you'll hear, it has a special meaning to me. It speaks of people that matter to me, uh, my mother, uh, God rest her, and, and her story. So I'd like to share this with you. It's entitled Red Cars and Christmas Stars from the 23rd of December from Let Advent Be Advent. For the John Casey was a priest in my home parish. He was a curate in Clunlu, County Sligo, and I never met him. He died nearly a quarter of a century before I was born. I grew up feeling I knew him, though, and he has been a part of my life, as sure and certain as any person I number among my friends and family. He mattered to me, and he still does. That's why I want to bring him to the pages of these reflections. I think he has a story to tell. My mother spoke often of Father Casey. She concluded every prayer we said as a family, or maybe just the two of us together in a car with the words, and our Father and three Hail Marys to ask Father Casey to ask God to help us and keep us free from accidents and harm at home and on the road. That was her optional extra to any prayer she ever said. Father Casey mattered to her and seemed important that his memory would matter to us as well. She told me once that on Christmas Day in 1930, Father Casey walked into her home with Christmas gifts for her two younger brothers and herself. It was the first Christmas after their father had died. He wanted to bring a little kindness to their home. She even remembered the toy he brought for her, a toy red car. This act of kindness seems to have been at the heart of my mother's absolute wish to keep Father Casey's memory alive and fresh for all of us. It wasn't until my own mother died a few years ago that I had grasped and made a connection with the full significance of this story. She was born in 1923, so her father died when she was about seven years of age and she was the oldest. It became clear to me then why a priest, an obviously good and holy priest, would want to do the right thing by a young family facing into Christmas Day without their father. Father Casey died in 1939, and my mother some 70 years later. She never allowed his story, or the place he had in her memory, to be lost or forgotten. There's a question here, I believe. In 70 years' time, for what will we be remembered? As we face into Christmas Eve now, the shopping is done the food has been ordered, the travel plans have been made, and the decorations and tree are in place and working. So concentrate now on the Christmas story. This is how Jesus Christ came to be born. Make it your own. Take it to your heart. And remember that Christ comes to you this Christmas to bring joy and peace to you and yours, to your home and parish, and to our country and world. Tell this story. Retell it, so the generations to come may come to know it as theirs too. A moment to pray. Lord, you taught us that we ought to treat others as we'd, as we'd wish them to treat us. Give me the grace and the time to reflect on that over the coming days. The young girl at the checkout in the shop rushed and stressed, to I show respect and gratitude in the simplest of all Christmas gifts, a smile and a thank you. The carol singers down the street, 
Is it totally necessary that their voice gets in on me? Or could I think that they are at least bringing a hymn and a carol and your presence to the market square? Remembering when I last felt ill at ease or nervous and grateful for a kind word, please, Lord, remind me to respond in the same way, a way that is gracious and giving. Above all, Lord, may I sow words of kindness today that will produce fruits in the memories of those with whom I share my life and for whom I live. Long, long into the new day of generations to come, may I truly treat others as I wished and wish they'd treat me. Amen.